Hello, and welcome to my tutorial. Today, we'll be working with Corel's Video Studio and Cool 3D 3.5 to create a 3D transition overlay. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Ken Lowther at videographics.info for the idea for this project. Ken's tutorial, Graphic Overlay Video Transition, features ULEADS Media Studio Pro and Cool 3D Production Studio, both of which are higher end and more expensive products. With a little ingenuity and a different approach, we too can use this fantastic effect in Video Studio. Due to the 10 minute time limit for YouTube videos, I'm going to leave a lot of explanations out, so I highly recommend that you read my tutorial under the same name at Corel's user to user forum or at videographics.info. Let's begin by starting Cool 3D. Go to Image, then Dimensions, and select 720 by 480 for NTSC, or 720 by 576 for PAL. Click OK. Next, change the frames per second to 29.97 for NTSC, or 25 for PAL. Next, change the number of frames to 180 for NTSC, or 150 for PAL. Now select View, and then Object Manager. Next, press Ctrl S and save the project with the name Transition Overlay. OK, let's now begin our design. Select the Insert Text icon. Next, type in your last name. Now use your mouse to highlight your name and click on the drop-down box for the font face. Instead of using our mouse to select the font though, let's use the down arrow keypad. This will allow us to see our name in the actual font, thus making it a lot easier to choose a font that we like. I chose Edwardian Script ITC. If you don't have that font, just use another script style. Also, let's change the font size to 30. Now click OK. Next select Edit, then Split Text. Now shift click the second and last letters of your name. Then click on the Group Objects icon and next click on Subgroup 1, which is our newly created subgroup, and rename it with the remaining letters of your name. Now select the first letter in the Object Manager, and then click the Edit Graphics icon. Select OK on the warning screen that tells you that the text will now become a graphic object. OK, so for our letter, let's create an oval that would enclose our letter. Notice that the ellipse shape is selected by default when we start the Path Editor. Click drag an oval until it is just big enough to enclose the letter. For my letter G, I'm going to create more of an oval rather than a circular shape. I'll also rotate and resize my oval. Next, copy the oval by selecting the Copy Path icon. Then resize the copied path by increasing the width and height values by 10 each. Now move the cursor over the copied object until it turns into a hand and move the copied object so that it surrounds the inner oval. By the way, it doesn't have to be perfect. And select OK. Now that we have an oval around our letter, which I'll refer to as our letter graphic from now on, you'll see that it overlaps part of the rest of our name. So let's move it a little to the left. Select the Move Object icon. Now while pressing the Shift key, move the mouse to the left until the letter no longer overlaps the rest of your name. Now is a good time to save the project again by pressing Ctrl S. We want our overlay to say a Your Name Production. So let's add the rest now. Click the Add Text icon and change the font to Arial and also change the font size to 15 less than the current value. Then type the letter A and select OK. As you can see, we'll need to move the letter A to above our name. So again, while pressing the Shift key, use the mouse to move the letter A upward. Now add the word Production and move it below your name. Now in the Object Manager, click on the Group icon. Next, apply a texture to the group from the Easy Palette by double-clicking on a gold texture. OK, now let's add some motion to this overlay. For this project, we're going to have the objects zoom in from the background for two seconds, pause for two seconds, and then zoom towards us for two seconds. Since our video will show through our letter graphic, We'll also need to change the group's position on the X and Y axis at the last part of the animation. So let's begin by adding some keyframes. By the way, if 
you're using PAL, I'll let you do the math for this portion. First, click the Move Object icon. Double click in the current frame box and type 60 and press Enter. Click the Add Keyframe icon. Do the same thing to add a keyframe at 120 and at 180. Now click on the first keyframe. Now we're going to move our group on the Z axis using the mouse. Hold down the right mouse button and move the mouse using upward strokes. Once the graphic is very, very tiny, you'll see that the X and Y axis have not changed and the Z axis is about 10,000. Okay, let's finish our animation. Click on the last keyframe, which is at 180, and let's change the position of our graphic so that it will be zoomed towards us and off screen. First though, use the right mouse button and use one downward stroke to bring the object closer to us. Next, center the letter graphic using the left mouse button. Now let's use the right mouse button and move the group towards us until it disappears. Okay, let's click on the play icon and watch our animation. Now let's press Ctrl S to save the project. Next, we'll render our project as a 32-bit AVI file. But first, let's make sure that our image output quality is set to optimal and that our object quality is also set to optimal. Now select File, Create Animation Files, then Video File. Now select Options. Next, select the Compression tab and change your settings so that compression is set to None and the data type is set to 32-bit RGB and select OK. Now name the file Transition Overlay and select Save. Depending on your system, it should take about 3 minutes or so. Now we're going to create an animated mask from our project which will also be used later in Video Studio. So now select File, then Save As and name the file Transition Overlay Mask. Since we watched our video, our current frame position is at 180, so let's click on the first keyframe. In the Object Manager, select the letter A and click the Hide icon. Do this also for Production and the remaining letters subgroup of your name. Now select the Letter Graphics icon in the Object Manager and select the Edit Graphics icon. Next, select the Object icon and select and delete all of the paths except for the inner oval by clicking on the delete path icon. If you make a mistake, press Ctrl Z to undo a change. When you're done, select OK. Now let's remove the texture by deselecting the Use Texture checkbox. Next, change the light and color property so that the surface, specular, and ambient lighting are all white. Also, deselect any light sources that are turned on. Save the project by pressing Ctrl S. Next, select File, Create Animation Files, then Video File. This time we're going to save the file without an alpha channel. So select Options, click the Compression tab, and change the settings so that compression is set to None and the data type is set to 24-bit RGB. Let's name our file Transition Overlay Mask and select Save. Alright, we're done with the hard part and we're just about out of time. So in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to use our 3D transition overlays. See you there.